Hello everyone and welcome to Amasupti Webcast. In this video, we are going to see the steps to create a two-way iSCSI connection to the iSCSI target using Multipath I.O. in Windows Server 2019. Remember, this is a taste environment created in VirtualBox so you can have an idea about the configuration steps in real world. First of all, let's understand this taste lab scenario. For this demo, we have total 3 virtual machines in VirtualBox. All are running on Windows Server 2019. The first one is our Windows Server 2019 domain controller for the domain mylab.local with the IP address 172.18.72.5. The second VM is a Windows Server 2019 with the name WS2K19-SRV01. On this virtual machine, I have total 3 network adapters. With one is host network adapter, which is going to connect to our domain environment with the IP address 172.18.72.9. We have another two network adapters for iSCSI connection, which we are going to use in multipath IO connection. With the adapter name iSCSI network 1 with the IP address 192.168.1.9. The second adapter has an IP address 192.168.2.9. On this virtual machine, I have added one more disk with the 100 GB of the size and on that I have created one partition with the travel letter E with the volume label iSCSI store where we are going to store our iSCSI data. Uh, one more thing that I want to show you, let me click on this IP address. On this two adapter which we are going to use in iSCSI connection, uh, if you see the property of this adapter, uh, let me show the properties. Here I have removed this uh, checkboxes client for Microsoft Network and file and print sharing for Microsoft Network. Uh, one more thing uh, which I have configured here is let's select Internet Protocol version 4 and click on properties. Here you can see I haven't specified any IP address about default gateway or TNS server address. We have only IP address and subnet mask. Let's click on advanced button and if you click on DNS tab here, uh, already I have removed this checkbox append parent suffix of the primary DNS suffix. Already I have cleared this checkbox as well, register this connection's address in DNS. If you click on wins tab, uh, here I have disabled the NetBIOS settings as well. So I have selected disable NetBIOS over TCP IP. I have done this for all four adapters which we are going to use in iSCSI multipath IO connection. Two on iSCSI target server and rest two on iSCSI initiator server. Fine, let me close this and let's take a look at the third virtual machine with the name WS2K19-SRV02. Uh, this machine is also part of our activity domain malab.local and on the machine we have three network adapter one for domain network which is configured with 172.18.72.11 and rest two for iSCSI connection with 192.168.1.11 and 192.168.2.11 uh, This is the lab setup which we have so this will be our iSCSI target server uh, with the IP address, uh, all with the 9 IP address, 172.18.72.9, 1.9 and 2.9. So it will be a very easy to remember this IP addressing. And this server, uh, WS2K19-SRV02 is going to work as a iSCSI initiator. And on this computer, we have a 3 adapter as well. Okay, so let's install iSCSI target server rule on our uh, member server 1. Now let's click on manage and select add rules and features. Click on next, next again, next again. Under file and storage services, uh, expand it. Uh, expand file and iSCSI services as well. And select iSCSI target. Click on add feature. Click on next, next again and click on install to start the installation process. At the same time, I am going back on our member server 2. Uh, first of all, I am going to click on tools and here I am going to select iSCSI initiator. The service is not up and running so let's click on yes button to start that service 
This will also set the startup mode of that service to automatic. Let's confirm it. Here we have a Microsoft iSCSI initiator service and if you double click on it, here you can see startup type is changed to automatic. Fine. Uh, here I'm going to install multipath IO feature on this server, uh, which we are going to use. Let's click on manage and select add rules and features. See, don't be confused with this one. Uh, this is the uh, uh, SRV02 where we are going to uh, configure iSCSI initiator. And for that, we need to install multipath IO. Click on next, next again, next again. Next again, and on select feature page, we need to select multipath IO. Fine, let's click on next button and click on install to start the installation process. Okay, let's go back to our SRV01. And here you can see installation process is still going on. Okay, as you can see, installation has been completed successfully. Uh, let's click on close to close this console. Now I'm going to click on file and storage services on a server manager console. And then after I'm going to click on iSCSI. Uh, let's click here to create an iSCSI virtual desk. Now that is going to start a new wizard. Here I'm going to select drive letter E to store this iSCSI virtual desk. Here we need to specify the name of virtual disk. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm giving name over disk one. Let's click on next. Here I'm going to specify the size, which will be a 50 GB in my case. Uh, you can specify the size as per your requirement and the disk type will be dynamically expanding. Let's click on next. Here we need to assign iSCSI target. So let's click on next to do it. Here we need to specify the name of the target. For this demonstration, I'm giving name iSCSI target1. Let's click on next. Here we need to specify the access server information. So we need to add it. Let's click on add button. And here I'm going to select enter a value for selected type. And uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to select IQN. So we need to find the IQN of initiator. So let's go back to our uh, Remember server 2 and here you can see installation has been completed successfully of a multipath IO feature. Let's click on close to close this console. Now let's click on tools and here I'm going to click on iSCSI initiator because we need the IQN of this member server. Fine, on configuration tab you need to click over there and under initiator name uh, we have to select this one. Let's uh, copy it. Let's paste here. And let's click on OK to do it. So you can also specify the IP address as well. So here, if you want to specify the IP address, uh, you need to select IP address in from here and then you have to specify the IP address of uh, initiator to identify it. But for this demonstration, we are happy with IQN. Let's click on next. We are not going to enable authentication uh, as we are in a test environment. So just uh, skip this one and click on next. Let's click on create. Okay, done. And let's click on close to close this console. So virtual disk has been created successfully and you can see the status, it is not connected. The target name is iSCSI target one and target status is also not connected. Uh, this is the IQN of initiator, which is going to connect to this uh, target one. Fine, so the configuration on our iSCSI target server has been completed. Now let's move into our member server where we are going to configure iSCSI initiator. But first of all, I'm going to click on tools and here I'm going to select MPIO. Uh, here you can see under devices, uh, under devices hardware ID, we have only one entry. Uh, by default, uh, MPIO does not have iSCSI support, so we need to add it. For that, I'm going to click on discover multipart tab. And here you can see that box is there, but it is not selected yet. So we need to select this box, add support for iSCSI devices. Let's click on it. Let's click on add. Let's click on OK button. 
and I'll click on OK again. And now uh, again, I'm going to click on Tools and I'm going to select MPIO. Here now we have a uh, under devices is hardware ID. We have options for MSFT, iSCSI, bus type. Fine. Uh, sometime it is going to ask for the restart. So if it is asking you to restart it, so you need to restart your server. But in my case, it didn't ask for the restart. So we are happy with it. Let's click on OK. Done. Let's click on Tools and select iSCSI Initiator. I'm going to click on Discovery tab and click on Discover Portal. I'm going to specify the IP address of our iSCSI target server which is 172.18.72.9 in our case. Okay, now I'm going to click on Targets tab and here we have a one iSCSI target discovered. Uh, you can see the status is inactive, so I'm going to click on Connect button and here I'm going to select Enable Multipath I.O. Let's click on Advanced button. Under Local Adapter, uh, I'm going to select Microsoft iSCSI Initiator under Initiator IP, I'm going to select 192.168.1.11 and in Target Portal IP address, I'm going to select 192.168.1.9. This is the, our iSCSI Network 1, which we are going to use here. Let's click on OK and click on OK. Now I'm going to click on Connect again. Let's select Enable Multipath and I'm going to click on Advanced button. Here, I'm going to select Microsoft iSCSI Initiator as a local adapter. In Initiator IP, I'm going to use the second IP address, which is 192.168.2.11. And under Target Portal IP address, I'm going to use 192.168.2.9-3260. This is our iSCSI network number two. Let's click on OK and click on OK to connect it. Fine. Now, let's uh, click on devices options and here you can see disk 1 and disk 1 it is connected with port 1 bus 0 but target 0 and target 1 if we select any of it uh, I'm going to select the first one and if you click on MPIO that time you can see this device has the following path it has a multiple path with this pass ID if you select any of it and if you click on details button, here you can see source portal, it is 192.168.1.11 and the target portal 192.168.1.9. That is the our iSCSI network number one. And if we click on the second one and if we click on details, that time you can see source portal 192.168.2.11 and 192.168.2.9 is also there. And you can see load balancing policy is also there. Uh, it is saying round robin. If we click on drop down menu here, plenty of other options are there. But for this demonstration, we are happy with the default selection. Let's click on OK. OK again. And if we click on favorite targets, here you can see both target is listed there. If we select any of it and if we click on details, here we can see source IP. That is 192.168.2.11 and the IP of target is 192.168.2.9. And same for the second one as well. If you click on details again, here we can see the second IP address is listed there. Fine. So that means we are using this both network to connect iSCSI target. Let's click on OK. And now I'm going to click on tools and let's open computer management. Now I'm going to click on disk management. Let's right click on disk one and select online. Let's right click on disk one and select properties. And here you can see MSFT virtual hard disk multipath disk device properties. Just like other hard disk, now you can create, partition and format it. And that's it. Done. So this is the way how we can connect the iSCSI target using multipath IO in Windows Server 2019. That concludes our video demonstration. Thank you all for watching this video. If you have any question and query related to this video, feel free to post in a comment section. That's it for this video. Thank you all for watching this video.